Hello, my name is Megan and I'm going to teach you everything behind the scenes of how the Jobber and the QuickBooks Sync works. I'm a bookkeeper. I own a bookkeeping firm and we do taxes and a lot of my clients use Jobber and QuickBooks. We utilize that sync. Yes, it's extra work. Yes, it requires some background knowledge of how the software works to do it correctly. But once you have it figured out, you are golden. You need to stay on top of it or have somebody within your company to stay on top of it. From there, you have it taken care of and I'm going to show you how. So this is the first part of a multi-series part. I don't know how long it's going to take, but there is a lot of communication that goes on between Jobber and QuickBooks and I'm going to break that down for you. Two things to note first. This video is for people who use both Jobber and QuickBooks. If that is not you, then this video probably does not apply to you. Second thing, you must have the two synced. So, um, for this video to apply to you, really. Um, I say that because if you do not have the software sync, then this video is not going to matter as much. And that's another discussion in itself. Some people choose to sync the software and it can be a great, beautiful sync. Some people choose to keep them unsynced and while it could save them time, we don't have quite of the maximum reporting features that we possibly could have to have a great understanding of the numbers in your business if they are not synced. Pros and cons to both. I can't even say which one is better than the other. It's really dependent on the business, the volume of transactions, the number of customers, the size of invoices. It really depends. So this video is really for those who already have it synced. You're learning how to sync the two correctly and how the communication works between those. I'm going to show you an example here. So First step that you need to do, you should have already sent out the invoice to your client. You should have already done the job or however your business works. You've already created the quote, um, you've converted it into a job, and then now we're sending the invoice to the client, whether you invoice prior to the work being done or you invoice to the work, you invoice the work after it's complete, however that works. But this is after the invoice is sent to the customer. We are now at the phase of our services where we are collecting a payment from our customer. That does not happen in QuickBooks. It needs to start in Jobber. Jobber will then push that payment over to QuickBooks and that's what the other series of videos is really going to cover. So you are in Jobber, you have your invoice and now you have your payment and we are putting this into Jobber. If they paid via Jobber payments, you don't need to record the payment into Jobber. You need to record the payment if they paid you cash, check, ACH, uh, possibly something like a money order, or if you have another payment collector or payment processor. Um, I don't know why you would use something other than Jobber like Square or something, but if you have another payment processor that is not Jobber, those are all reasons why we need to start here in Jobber. So you're not starting in QuickBooks, you collect the payment first into Jobber. So I'm using this example, it's an old invoice, um, but we are gonna start here. You are gonna start with the collect payment and you are gonna choose the method on which they paid you. Um, a lot of times clients that I have received checks or bank transfers, um, so either one, maybe you received it, it via check. Double check that the invoice number is correct that for what they paid you for and double check that the amount is right. So there's always small little accounting errors. We're all human. We're trying to minimize that. So make sure that the they wrote you a check for the amount that the invoice is for. If you need to edit the amount, you can always come here and edit the amount. The transaction date, I like to put it as the date it hit your bank account. So if you got a check in the mail on the 1st and you don't take it to the bank till the 3rd and then it doesn't deposit into your bank until the 5th, well, I'm going to choose the 5th, the date that it hit the bank account, not the date that the check is written for, the date that it hits your bank account so that if I pull a bank statement, this collect payment is going to match that bank statement. That's the date I choose to use. Um, whatever date system you are choosing just needs to be consistent across the board, whether it's the date you take it to the bank or collect it. I just don't think there's a good paper trail of tracking down that transaction date, so I always choose the date that it hit the bank account. So I'm going December 5th. You need to have a reference number here. Super, super, 
super important to have a reference number. This could be a check number, um, possibly if it's a bank transfer and, or an ACH, there's going to be some sort of remittance or an email confirmation or a payment number onto your ACH. You need to put in that confirmation number. It is super, super, super important. So once the transaction date is in there correctly, once you add in a confirmation number or a check number, then you are set. You would select save and then this little past due is going to turn green and then it won't say collect payment up here anymore. It will say uh, reopen invoice if you ever need to reopen the invoice. That is how it's done. I'm not going to save it just for this example. I'm just going to hit cancel. So, but make sure you hit save if that is a true payment that you collected on. After you did that for all the payments you collected on, maybe you got 30 checks that day and you went through those 30 invoices, collected all the payments, then manually push that sync over to QuickBooks. This kind of concludes part one possibly arguably one of the most important parts of this whole Jobber QuickBooks sync. Uh, you need to start in Jobber, collect the payment here first, push the sync over to QuickBooks. Very, very, very important. Check that there are no errors um, or no warnings on the sync. And then part two, we are going to hop on over into QuickBooks to take care of the rest of the matching the payments and invoices together and make sure QuickBooks is set right.